Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you today. Today we celebrate St. Teresa of Avila, the great uh, Spanish mystic and a doctor of the church who is from the 16th century. But she formed the Decalced Carmelites, which really translates to shoeless Carmelites, meaning go back to poverty, go back to surrendering everything to the Lord and letting him be the one that, that orders your life. She's known for a couple really good books, but um, The Interior Castle and The Way of Perfection are two that are really, really known by her. But she teaches us how to order our lives. We celebrate today with the Carmelite Monastery on Carmel Road here in Buffalo and all the graces in which the Carmelite sisters here and the Carmelites throughout the world give glory and praise to God for St. Teresa. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your Spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the way to seek perfection, grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired up with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what can we say that Abraham found, our ancestor according to the flesh? Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast. But this was not so in the sight of God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So also David declares the blessedness of the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and those sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not record. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, Lord, in in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I cover not. I said, confess, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble and you fill me with the joy of salvation. 
Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, so many people were crowding together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, Beware of the leaven, that is hypocrisy of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that can do no more. I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna, Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Teresa of Avila lived at a time when they joined the Carmelite Monastery. They would join, and it was kind of a place of social status. People would go there and um, kind of well-to-do. So they would have fine teas together, afternoon teas, and they would spend a lot of time together enjoying the beauty of of being part of religious life. And that's what created, really, St. Teresa of Avila, who wanted to surrender everything to God, and she formed what would be shoeless Carmelites, or those that that move to a poverty of spirit and poverty in the way they live. And she was very, very strong in it. And actually, she really changed the world, her and St. John of the Cross. And she brought us back to what was most important. But she is known for a certain prayer that tells us not to fear. And I think in changing times and changing struggles that all of us have, we need to hear the words of today's gospel to not be afraid, to not be fearful, but instead to surrender and to trust in God. One of the best lines, I think, even more than fear not out of this passage, is that even the hairs of your head have been counted. Imagine knowing that a loving creator who watches over every one of us has lovingly knitted every single hair on our head, who watches over our heads watches over our shoulders, is there when times are tough, when times are also victorious, but will always be by our side and will never leave us alone. When we deal with the riches of the world, we sometimes forget that. And that's why the rosary over the years has been such a source of inspiration, because it's such a a fundamental prayer as we celebrate a month dedicated to Our Lady the Rosary or a month dedicated to Mary where it's the timeless treasures that it unlock by dealing with the ways of scriptures and using those beads, something so fundamental that draws ever to Christ. But this is a prayer that is said by St. Teresa of Avila, attributable to her, I will say, and it's used throughout the world that speaks of today's gospel. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. So as we begin this day, may we begin with a motto of the day, to fear not, to not be afraid, that whoever has God lacks nothing. These are words attributable to the writings of St. Teresa of Avila. I think, actually, if we went in history... They may may not be actually her words, 
but attributable to the charism of the order. But it teaches us to not be afraid, but instead let God be God. And today as we begin the day, may we know that God watches over us, has counted every hair on your head, and you're worth many more than all of God's creation because you're specifically you. And then do your work in the world as you sow seeds this day and allow the interior self, that interior castle, all of us, to radiate and build the beauty of a loving God and a loving kingdom. It takes all of us to, it takes a village to raise someone, but it takes all of us to work together to build up that kingdom. And Jesus gives us these words today to tell us that we'll never, ever, ever, ever be alone. Please rise now for the intercessions. With trust in God's care for us, we offer these prayers today, letting nothing disturb us. For the church, all the faithful, for you and I, as we begin a new day in the Lord, may the Lord continue to bless us, protect us from all evil, and may our Lord watch over us and just draw us, every one of us, to himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, for ways in which we're leaders in our own families, in our own relationships, in our own home, may we be given the vision to see and respond to the needs of every person that we meet, especially the most vulnerable, and help them also to not be afraid that God's in charge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the times that we feel defeated, or we feel that the world's kind of closing in on us, that our daily battles that we have, we pray in a special way for our, our parasick list, all those that grieve the loss of another. May we seek the Lord out and may we receive the grace of healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith of St. John the 23rd, may the Holy Spirit continue to help us grow in faith, help us grow in hope, and help us grow in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our um, funeral that I have tomorrow for, Roan, uh, for Joan, um, no Marita, and we also pray for um, our rosary crusade that takes place tomorrow as well, that we may all just join in, in battle and, and praying that rosary at 12 noon tomorrow and be, be drawn to strengthen it. Um, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, today we remember in a special way Alice Jerkovsky. Pray for Stan, who's right in front of me. Pray for him and his sister and, and the whole family. Um, we pray for Alice, who raised her family on Eldred. And as Stan would know, prayed so many rosaries that um, helped change that area and change the hearts of so many and watch over them. But we pray that Alice may be welcomed into God's glory with her husband and that we may meet them again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice in the silence of our hearts. We make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear and answer these prayers. We offer them to you with love and belief that you will take care of our needs. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. May our offerings, O Lord, be acceptable to your majesty, to whom the devoted service of St. Teresa was pleasing in such great measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. It is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, our God, that your obedient family, whom you fed with the bread from, of heaven, may follow the example of St. Teresa and rejoice to sing of your mercies for all eternity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.